So this exercise is not just about swapping one leader for another and all will be well. If you're disgruntled with the current leadership, remember that 60 million people of your fellow countrymen voted for this person. So, swapping people doesn't change the electorate, it only changes who got elected. And you, we want to live in a country that is, yes, pluralistic, but understands the difference between a fact and something that's false. That's what we have to start there. Then you don't have these issues, but let's swap out the president. It's because deep down, there are fundamental misconceptions about how this world works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, from my understanding, time comes to a stop at the event horizon of a black hole. If that's true, does it mean that nothing has actually ever fallen into a black hole? <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, when you get to the event horizon, basically time stops. Uh, there was a... a a New York Times science writer, Walter Sullivan, uh, a few decades ago, who, when he learned this, he wrote a book called Frozen Star, which is the, the description of this state right at the event horizon. So what we see fall in, we watch their time get slower and slower and slower, and ultimately it just stops right at the event horizon. If you are that person falling in, you just fall straight in. And you watch the entire future history of the universe unfold before you. And a bit of this was captured in a, in a scene in the movie um, Interstellar, where they go down near the surface of the black hole, and what is it, 20 minutes for them is 20 years for the, 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 the fellow up in the space here. So this difference in time is real. We measured in our laboratories. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the answer. Yes, in that case. Yeah. Time is short, so let's make this quick. We could do a relativity thing and, and, and prolong it if you need to, yeah. Only from the point of view of people waiting outside. <laughs> Hi, um, what do you think of the realism of the Space Force? <laughs> uh, who's that to? Who's that to? Oh, who wants to take that? Someone else? I, I have an amp, but we... I don't want to hog the mic. <laughs> Seth, you're in a space. Seth, at this point, he doesn't even know if the CIA is real. So I don't <laughs> 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 know. Maybe under 18, you know, sorry. I've never <laughs> sworn before, and I certainly would never do it again. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a sucker for artists, okay? Uh, I think the only way science can ever truly mainstream into our culture is if and when scientists, when artists see science as a force in their creative energies. Science as the artist's muse. So when an artist calls me, capital A, so they can be a sculptor, a, a singer, a, a producer, a writer, a cartoonist, if they call me and say, there's a little bit of science I want to put in my art, I am there for them. And, and I work with them, they usually want to get what, whatever can be right, right, and then you extend it from there in the creative process. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm highly responsive to artists who want to add science to their work. And that was one example of them, of many. Uh, I was also the voice of Waddles the pig in a Disney show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pig got super intelligent overnight and devised a machine to communicate with his friends. And I was the voice while the pig was intelligent. So I, I was, uh, and I have a cameo in in Zoolander 2. 
<laughs> so the capital A artist spans a lot of genre here, and it's usually <laughs> something small. I'm not an actor. I don't claim to have talent there, but the the exercise I think helps distribute science in all the ways we receive entertainment, and for me that's an important fact in society. So, I, I'm in New York, and I get a phone call from Seth, hey Neil, you, can, you, you available for lunch? And I said, well sure, I really wasn't, but I cleared it out for him because he came through town. So we have lunch, he asked me 20 questions about the Big Bang. And it's always a curious guy, and I love it because he likes science. Later on, I watch an episode of Family Guy, and Stewie's time machine goes back to before the Big Bang. <laughs> and at the end, it says, science consultant Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> There for the artists when they need it. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry to say we are out of time. We oh. oh got we? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait. Woo. Does someone online dress like Carl Sagan? You got to bring him to the front of the line. Yeah. Can you come up, Carl Sagan? Seth MacFarlane, Neil Grass Tyson, and Andrea, and thank you for being here.